currently um, abroad studying for the LSAT. So that's a, that's a thing. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Well, I'm, I'm glad that we connected. I'm happy to help however I can, of course. What's going on for you with your prep? So um, right now, um, I'm going to take my LSAT on August 29th, um, 2020. And so I've just, I started studying around like two to three weeks ago. I'm going to take a full practice test this weekend. But um, I was just going to ask you about like the length of my scheduling. And then after I'm done with foundations, I was going to see if um, I could maybe move on to your three month schedule and how that would look like um, with a... Um, like a full-time internship or something like that. Yeah, um, sure. Absolutely. And asking if that would be like, um, uh, what do you call it? Like a, something that's like feasible and like something that would be like a good combination um, when it came to like prepping. Yeah, certainly. Absolutely. I mean, my methods are compatible with a ri wide range of resources out there already. They do assume that you're starting from scratch though. So oh, okay. if you're doing other prep prior and then you want to start one of my schedules, that's perfectly fine. But I would suggest getting one of my longer term schedules and starting in the middle because that way you can jump in at the point that's most appropriate for where you're at at that moment. Right. So um, if I'm doing, if I have six months and I'm like, it's like, like from now, I take in six months, where, where, which schedule should I, should I get? I would suggest you get my six month plan and okay. you can use it with other resources and simply read the relevant chapter of that book before doing the relevant practice problems of that type as laid out in my study plan. Right. Um, okay. Thank you so much. And then another question I have is like, um, when you're studying for like the LSAT, a lot of people like recommend like a notebook to like keep, um, you know, things you got wrong or like notes for diagramming. Um, um, do you recommend that? And in your notebook, like what do you think people should put inside of it? Absolutely. Yeah. So I actually taught a class recently on question review processes. And one of them is to keep a mistake journal or log, as you said, where you articulate your thought process, your own, as part of your own review process, before you look at other explanations, whether in written or video form, you first analyze what you were thinking in the moment. And so let's say for logical reasoning, what was tempting about the wrong answer that made you pick it and what ultimately makes it wrong and what was discouraging about the right answer that pushed you away from it and what ultimately made it correct. And if right. you want to take that to the next level, you could actually write out your own explanations as if, as if you were trying to explain the problem to somebody else. That's what I'm doing right now because I'm in the middle of like, I just learned like most of the annotations, like the contrapositives for um, all the logic games. And it's, I'm not going to lie to you, like they're very fun. Um, and so like when I get one wrong, it's kind of like, oh, well, you weren't thinking, you weren't reading the, I have a problem with like, just like skipping over the question or like not reading like the right, not like skipping it over, but it being like, what is false? And I'll be like, in my mind, it's, I read it as, oh, what's true. And so I think just like being careful in that. And like, that goes on to like my second question. Um, I just, I was gonna, gonna ask you like, what are the best habits to establish like early on in studying? Because I wanna get, I am scoring for 170 plus um, just because of, you know, like scholarship money and, you know, obviously like getting into a great school, but I, I don't want to be making mistakes early on right now. Um, so we're like, you know, I'll become hard headed in the future, in these future months. Of course. Well, one of them, as we said, is the review process, slowing down, doing fewer exams, fewer questions and reviewing them in more detail. That's a good habit to instill early. And of course, we're speaking now in early March, you have plenty of time until August to put this into practice. So that's great. The second thing I would say is what you're also doing already as well is having a defined plan of attack. So you're not just randomly doing exam after exam and measuring yourself, you're slowing down, you're building the foundation first, looking to get a comprehensive overview of each section and question type. So you are approaching this systematically and I think that's all good. So I would just say, keep doing what you're doing, use the best resources possible, which you are doing to learn the basics and learn the proper perspective from which to view each question before simply jumping in. Right. I just like, I'm feeling like whenever I'm like reading like a lot of the questions, like, you know, I'm like, I'm just like missing, I'm like missing words or like some words that like I, I'm thinking aren't like translating like 
when people like I've, I've just like started saying if I see either or I just cross out either. I'm like, nope, no, I don't. That doesn't matter. But like, it's, I don't know. It's been, I was like listening to your, I listened to your podcast, like on my commute, like to, to and from university. And so I'm just like, well, okay. And like you, it offers like so many like helpful resources. And I just, I don't want to be stuck in the, the swarm of like so many, so much, so many like different um, like systems and like ways, because I know that if you go from, you know, what's great about, um, you know, your program is because you use like, okay, practice test. These are the questions I want you to do from the actual LSAT. I feel like it's really important at least like to just stick to like one system. Yeah, totally. I think that you risk confusing yourself with different terminologies if you're jumping between different methods. And personally, I, I try not to use overly complicated terminology or descriptors. I say strength in questions, let's call it a strength in question, just to right. keep it really simple. But yeah, I think if you use the study plan, you just follow that, you're doing the right thing. And then as test get day gets closer, you may discover some weak areas you want to focus on additionally to the side. And that's perfectly fine too, of course. And then I, I know you recommend studying at least like 10 to 12 in the beginning, um, hours a week. And so when we start hitting around like three months near the LSAT, because I really want to focus it, like doing like practice tests and doing like the real, not that I'm not doing the real things, but just that right now I'm doing a lot of foundational work. Um, how many hours should I be putting in at least like at those three months? Cause I know that, you know, school is approaching, like I may have like an internship. So like, no needing to do things like later at night because I, I can't do anything in the morning. I tried. I listened to your podcast and you're like last night and you're like, oh, well, let's, you know, try in the morning. I woke up this morning and was like, I can't focus. <laughs> yeah. I mean, ultimately, as far as a daily plan, it'll work, depend on what's best for you. Some people are morning people, some are night owls, and that's totally fine. You just want to fit in the time wherever you can. And as for a weekly time frame, I like the idea of at least really 15 to 20 hours a week. But obviously, everyone has different obligations like with work, with school and such. And so try to plan around that. If your summer is going to be relatively open and then you'll be busier in the fall, then do more in the summer and then do a little bit less in the lead up to your August LSAT in this particular case. But I think even 25 hours wouldn't be too much necessarily. Just spread it out so you don't burn out. Okay. Because that's the one thing that I just don't want to, like, I just don't want to, first of all, like burn out and I don't want... I don't want to get like used to just as much as I would love getting used to obviously familiarity with the questions. I don't want my head to be like, Oh, this again, this again, like just to remain focused and sharp. Um, so yeah, that's, I just, I mean, I wanted to make this, you know, like meeting to just make sure that like what I was thinking and like that my systematic approach was correct because there's a lot of people who are telling me like different things and what I should be buying and what I should be using. But I feel like having foundations and then like the strict material as it is, is um, important. Exactly. Yeah. And of course, make modifications along the way as you need to. But if something's working for you, then stick with that for now. Also, another question. So when you study for the LSAT, do you try to like recreate the, um, the environment of like in which you are going to be test taking? So like, like, do you do it quiet or like, could there be like room for like music, like study music in the background just because it keeps me a little bit awake? So yeah, that's a, great, that's a great question. And this comes back to what you were saying earlier about habits. I didn't bring it up earlier because it, you're not at that stage yet. But as test day gets closer, and I would say really, with, if we're speaking now with a six-month timeline up ahead, maybe when you hit the three-month mark, at that point, you may want to start doing full-length timed exams to work on your endurance and also properly simulating test day conditions. And so pro part of properly simulating test day means you're not going to have music in the background. You can't yeah. pause the clock to go to the bathroom. You can't go to the refrigerator. You can't go get a drink. You can't check your email, right? So mm -hmm. as it gets closer, you're going to want to more and more closely mimic proper test day conditions specifically. But if you're just building your foundation right now, if you want to listen to some music, I think that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. For me, simulating test day conditions is really about when you're doing an individual timed section or a full length timed exam. That's when timing becomes really important. But for now, if you're five, six months out, I would just do whatever's easiest for you right now. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Because I, I just, yeah, like a lot of people like said, like, are like, don't study abroad and like do, you know, the, L, the study for the LSAT. But for me, at least I found it easier 
just because it's like I'm not around anyone I know. So no one can tempt me with anything. So. Yeah, no, you're disconnected. I think that's, there's a value in that definitely to be able to put yourself away from everyone else just to focus on this. There's no reason you need to be in your, in your hometown to study for the LSAT. Everything is <laughs> digital and whatever isn't digital, you can get the books shipped to you if you need them. Right. And um, when you, even though like most of the LSATs are on paper, like the older ones, when we become closer to test day, would you recommend just doing most of the ones that are available online? Yeah. So I know that you're abroad right now. Where are you taking it though? I'm taking it in New York. I go okay. to school. I go to Fordham. So oh, nice. Cool. Okay. So yeah, if you're taking it in New York, of course, it will be digital. And so you're going to want to do a lot of digital LSAT practice specifically as LSAT test day approaches for you. And there are currently three exams in the digital format on LSAC's site, and presumably they will be releasing more in the lead up to your test date. Abs absent that, you could just use PDFs, load them up onto your computer screen and do your work on scratch paper to the side. Or if you're working out of books, treat your books like screens, meaning you don't write on them since you can't draw freehand on the digital LSAT. Okay, okay, okay. Oh my God. Thank you so much. This, this really helps a lot. Okay. Yeah. This helps a lot. Thank you so much. Awesome. I'm really glad to hear it. Uh, if nothing else, um, we could sign off for now, but before we do, what's the mm -hmm. biggest insight you got from our call today? Um, other than just like anxiety, like depleted, I would probably say, um, just assurance and like what I should be doing and especially with a plan and especially what I should be looking at each month. Um, especially when it comes to going closer to the ELSA and mimicking um, different environments, not different, but the same testing environment, as well as, um, you know, um, having a schedule that is very close to the actual exam. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm really glad we connected. Please keep in touch and let me know if you need anything at all as you move forward. Of course. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.